Well, welcome to Man City's training ground. I'm sat here with my good friend and England international, Julian Lescott, who's very kindly given up his time to answer a few of our questions. Well, Julian. Hello, mate. Hello. Uh, you've obviously come a long way since kicking a ball around uh, the playing fields of Four Dwellings High School in Quinton in the Midlands. Did you always want to be a footballer? And if so, would, did you think you'd become the England star you are today? <laughs> Um, yeah, I always wanted to play. Um, they had a spell when I was around about 14 that I weren't so keen because it was a bit too serious for where I was at. But then when I was leaving school, I realised that's what I wanted to do. And obviously my older brother played, played for Aston Villa at the time. So I think any, any child doesn't look up to their older brother. So it's something I wanted to do. And unfortunately enough, I got the opportunity. Good. You, said, you mentioned Aston Villa there. Uh, Aston Villa was your uh, childhood team, but at the age of 17, you made your debut for Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton Wanderers, a bitter rival. Yeah. How did this go down with your family and friends? Well, obviously, family and friends were just pleased that I would make my debut at such a young age, and, and I know it's going to obviously get out, but uh, I was a Villa fan growing up, obviously, and loved them, and then I fell out of love with them a little bit when I went for a trial and they told me I weren't good enough. So uh, <laughs> it's ironic because it was Gareth Barry at the time that um, they obviously, he was signed there and they decided not to take me on because they had him and um, Jay Lloyd at the time as well. So uh, I blame Gareth Barry really. Yeah? I mean, that's Have you mentioned that anymore. to him recently? Or? Nah, he, he knows what or I think. Or at first? Yeah, at first yeah. there was a little bit of... Um, Animosity, is that the right yeah, word to use? Correct, but now it's, now it's uh, tied down now. Right, OK. What was it like beating Sheffield United in the playoff final at the Millennium Stadium to get promoted to the promised land? That, that was amazing. Um, obviously scoring three goals in the first half and still being quite young and inexperienced. Uh, and at half-time, I don't think I could hear or take in what the manager was saying. I was just thinking, oh, we're going to go up. We're up in the Premier League. So yeah. um, I've grown up a bit since then. and. Obviously, half times were a bit more serious, but um, yeah, at the time it was great. The celebrations was great, and being a part of that uh, history for Wolves has, has played a massive part of my career. In the 2007-2008 season at Everton, you had a shot to goal ratio of 42.1%, <laughs> the best in the English Premier League. Is that when I scored 10? Yeah, 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 I think I scored 10 that season. Have you ever fancied being a frontman goal scorer? Definitely, I think about it all the time, and uh, but it's not to be now. Obviously, I'm getting older now, so I don't think I can restart my career and, and just be, be a striker. Um, but obviously, working with the likes of you, James, I've seen seen the movements. So I, I took it in. I weren't just there uh, trying to mark it. I was taking it in to to master it myself when going up for corners and stuff like that. And After the great service you put in at Everton, in which you earned, earned two Players Player of the Year awards and one Player of the Year award, as voted by the fans. Did you feel your treatment by the club and fans was harsh as you expressed an interest to further your career by joining Manchester City? Um, I wouldn't say harsh. Uh, I understand why they were so determined to keep me there and the fans were so negative about me leaving. But at that stage of my career, I felt for me to, to win trophies and the best opportunity for me to do that was, was to move to City. And since then, it's been justified. Um, so I like to think that the fans now realise, obviously I'm not asking them to forgive and forget everything, but yeah, uh, I like to think that they, they know, realise why why I came to see and as I say, I still wish Everton all the success, but my, um, my short and long term goals were to win trophies and I just believed that Man City were capable of doing that a lot earlier than Everton. With the financial fair play regulations coming in, do you see anyone outside of the top four or five teams being able to compete for the title like City did in the near future? Um, yeah, because uh, as much as people say, well, we hijacked it or there's only so many teams <coughs> that can win it, I think if you look across Europe, then we're probably the most competitive league in terms of winners. I know Germany have a great standard now and obviously Bayern and Dortmund and... Uh, teams over there and obviously the Spain is basically no disrespect to Atletico but it's mainly Real and Barca that win it where in England there's Chelsea, us, Man United, um, I know Arsenal have won it for years and Spurs now obviously so I think the competition is a lot vast here and 
I don't think the owners and the would about that before they, they took over. Do you miss Mario as a club and personally? Yeah, of course. Um, you need characters like that, you know, James. He was, he was that character for us at, uh, <laughs> at Everton. Um, never in a mood, never always smiling and stuff like that. I know people are not going to say that about Mario, but I'm talking about you now. So I think every club needs that kind of personality. And when, when it does get stressful, you need someone in the dressing room to be able to take the focus away from it and, and just make you realise how much you do enjoy the game. And, how much you enjoy the, the lifestyle, so and Mario is definitely one of them characters. Everyone has a, a Mario story, fireworks in the house, etc. What would be your Mario story? Mario story, not long come back. From a, oh, I've been out for a few days with back injury, and we've come out, it's freezing cold for training. And then uh, he's tried to, because obviously it's raining and stuff, he tried to grab my hat because he, want, he didn't have a hat on. You know me and hats change. You yeah. know that's you that's do like, like a hat, don't you? yeah that's 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 a nerve that's a nerve right there. So I've had to show him. And previously before that, he'd been thinking I was just big and slow and yeah, not really strong and that. So then he mistake. Yeah, I caught him <laughs> anyway. <laughs>